everyone, Symphatic Future here, and today we're going to take a look at another one of the Arturia V collections. Many, many instruments, and this is the Mellotron, a 1960s invention. It's basically a glorified tape player, where in the original version every single key had a magnetic tape attached to it. So it was a pretty, well for the time, very advanced instrument because you could use actual samples. It's it's a sample player, but a really old sample player. But it had some limitations that thankfully, due to the modern age of computers, we don't have to deal with anymore. So this is a Mellotron with pretty much a limited tape length, which is pretty neat. So uh, the original had a tape length of about eight seconds, according to Wikipedia and Wikipedia knows best. This uh, little thing, you can just hold the note however long you feel like holding the note. I'll just quickly tune it down a little bit. But as you can see, it will just keep looping for as long as it has to while you're holding your key. Uh, the conveniences of the modern age and probably a reason why people will say, it's not a real Mellotron. Of course it isn't, it's a digital model. But it, it has a certain charm to it, even though personally I don't see that many cases where I would use it. But there's definitely something to be said about uh, this sort of, it's very good for lo-fi, I guess, and also maybe for 70s rock. It does seem like that's where you would find these uh, these types of strings. So just quickly through the interface, uh, the thing by itself is pretty boring because it's just this. When it comes to Arturia interfaces at this point, this is about as much a waste of space as possible because you only have these knobs here. So you have a volume, a tone, which is essentially a brightness control. You can mess with the master pitch. And here you can select which of the voices play. So you have three uh, different sounds and you can switch between, uh, well not switch, you can actually blend between A, B, C or all. Oh. Easy now. And because you have one tape for every key, there's virtually endless polyphony because you can just play every key at the same time and all the separate magnetic tapes will play. And you get this wonderful, interesting sound. Now the real magic happens when you open this thing up. Now you get some extra controls. Uh, this is basically what happens in your analog stuff is that you get flutter and whoa and hiss and nasty stuff. You can actually Turn on the mechanics and this essentially is a microphone <laughs> placed over your Mellotron if you want to hear tapes spinning and things clicking. You really turn it up. So now you can actually hear the, the key press and uh, the tape stop. I mean, everything for the lo-fi. Uh, tape saturation, of course. Pretty nice when you turn it down. Because in the higher record search it gets really hissy and nasty. Uh, but when you play pretty low, it gets pretty interesting. And you can make it pretty much 
<laughs> play like a tremolo sampler. Really weird. It's almost like this thing where you talk while striking your uh, chest a little bit. So, uh, it's really, really weird. Really weird thing. Uh, but hey, <laughs> you can play around with it. You can set your release. Attack sustain decay. Actually, the release really highlights how much tape hiss there is. This is with the noise floor all open. Let's just uh, 50 him out. So, noise floor. So, it goes 1 to 2. So, oh, it's interesting that 50 is not at the top. Which probably all the people that work with analog gear are now screaming at me that that's the way it works. Let me just oops, turn this down. So this way it's pretty well controlled with uh, with all the extra hiss and noise and stuff. And it, it definitely has a charm. I, I can see people liking a sound like this. Uh, so down here you have your... Oh, let me actually exit this. This is how it normally looks. So you have your uh, ranges here with your different samples and you can... This is essentially the knob above. Uh, you can also completely turn a track off. Not quite sure why you would want that. But it's an option and you can click them open and you get uh, the sample which is loaded into this uh, lane. So do keep in mind you can only blend between A and B so not between A and C. So you need to plan it a little bit if you are specific out about the things you want to layer. Uh, here you can load from the included library, which has all the basic things, strings, harp chords, cellos, oboes, organs, that sort of stuff. Uh, but you can also just browse into your computer and grab a sample of your liking. So this is from uh, Ghost Hack. It's actually a free acapella pack. I don't know in which key this is, but let's just find out, shall we? So clearly I'm outside the playing range, yep, quite a lot. That's a lot of release there. So what we probably want to do is not pen this that far to the side there we go center and now we can go to the violin sample zero this out blend it in that's pretty fun that you can put your own samples in here and the nice thing is You can sort of add that tape flavor to it. If your tape equipment sounds like that, you probably need to check on it. Nasty. Uh, <laughs> still fun though. Uh, so you can see it's, it's basic sampler stuff. Just set your looping range. You can set it forward, backwards, not loop at all. All your... It's like the most basic stuff. Yeah. Transpose, tuning, it's all very basic. So there's not a whole lot to talk about with this instrument. So let's just go through a few. It's a very small pack of, uh, of presets. It's basically uh, all, all the samples. Let's just go through a few. Got to make it to that 10 minute mark. Oh, we're already there. Awesome. Jokes. So that's one thing you never have to deal with with tape equipment is waiting for samples to load, I guess. Oh, 
court. There we go. So, I'm not 100% sure, but I think my fee collection is installed on an SSD, so the loading times are not amazing. Oh, that's a nice ta tape stop. It actually has a little bit of momentum on the uh, on the modulation uh, there on the pitch pen. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. So what I'm essentially doing is maybe you can hear it. Really flicking the uh, the pitch. So it actually has a little bit of momentum there. So that's a nice little touch. I don't really see people playing weird solo stuff on this, but hey. <laughs> So there we go, it's loading. Well, we can get the flute. I think the flute should be a little bit louder. Let's put it there. I do believe this is one of those machines that was used quite a bit on uh, the progressive symphonic rock stuff. Yeah, definitely. Beatles, Bowie. Yeah, that's that's some interesting stuff from back in the day. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, so so what more can we say about the Mellotron? Not really much. It's it's really one of those things where you either you you want that sound or you don't care at all. I find myself in, in my music making pretty indifferent. I don't really care about it. It's not a VST I touch upon a lot. It's it's one of those things. It's there, but it's not entirely for me. But at the same time, I can definitely see, see a charm in it. And since you can load your own samples, that really opens it up quite a bit uh, to some interesting experimentation. And it's going to be a hell of a lot easier than loading your own samples into a actual, actual Mellotron. I, I don't even know where to start with something like that. You would have to re-pitch a sample on your PC and record it into tape machines or something. It's a whole mess. No, this is definitely the better way. Uh, how does it compare to a real Mellotron? I don't have a clue, to be honest. I don't have a Mellotron. Uh, you can listen to many uh, Mellotron online. There's plenty of videos on, on YouTube, so judge for yourself if you think it sounds good or if it sounds comparable, I think, really honestly. To my ears, it's, it pretty much sounds like a lo-fi tape machine and that's exactly what it should be. So good job, Arturia. And actually, uh, People who have watched other videos, I always riff about the interfaces being pretty stupid. I don't mind this interface because it's pretty, pretty excellent. I mean, there's a little bit of wasted space here. I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him for that. I mean, this is neat, nicely compact. Maybe make the keyboard collapsible. Then again, being able to set the range is pretty useful. So, hey, good job, Arturia. Good job. Very nice. So that's it for now. That's my overview of the Mellotron from the Arturia V collection. And I hope to see you in another video. Uh, if you like this video, please drop a like. It really helps with the algorithm a lot. Like, seriously. Uh, and that's it for now. Uh, see you around.